and to hold off a late rally from Ole Miss. Murray Boyles and Cisse jumped and Ole Miss controls the opening tip. Andrew Murray with the ball gets it to Matthew Morrell. Near turnover for Ole Miss. Rebels able to save the possession. This is a good South Carolina defense that gives up a lob and a dunk to start things off. And we will see a lot of that high pick and roll. Great job by Murray. Understands. Saw B.J. Mack come up for the help. Throw it as high as you want. C.C. is going to catch it. Good to see Michi Johnson back in the lineup. That one was blocked on the perimeter. He took an elbow to the head last Saturday in the second half against LSU. Went through concussion protocol, returned to practice on Thursday, and he is with the team today. You see the starting 5-4 Ole Miss. Moose Cisse all with the, already with a bucket. David Brakefield. Shot clock at five. Juju Murray. Trying to find some space. Pushes it up, spins off. Offensive rebound for Cisse and reverses it up and in. Well, he started active today. Musa Cisse already has two buckets and a blocked shot. He had only two points against South Carolina in the first meeting. DJ Mack. Davis working against Morrell gets it up off the glass and draws the foul. So Matthew Morrell picks up his first. Chris Beard in his first season in Oxford. He's been good everywhere he's been. National Coach of the Year in 2019, trying to get Ole Miss to its 13th 20 win season all time. Yeah, I was able to catch their walk through last night, watch a little game film with them and the Attention to detail on this scouting report, as you can imagine, is second to none. And we'll see, South Carolina's offense is extremely patient. Talon Cooper is number two in the SEC assist to turnover ratio, so they're going to use most of their shot clock. So you're going to be prepared, you know, Ole Miss, to defend for a full 30 seconds each time down the floor and then finish it off with a defensive rebound. Zachary Davis, the sophomore from Orangeburg, South Carolina, with a couple of free throw makes. Here's Alan Flanagan, who had a big game against South Carolina. It was the mid-range game that was so big. He did that a bunch in the first mid. He comes up empty there. Yeah, he made a bunch of tough twos, and South Carolina's defense is very good. Stay in front of the basketball, force you to take those contested two-pointers. Two Ron Cooper was looking to the inside. Michi Johnson guarded loosely by Flanagan. Tries to spin his way in. B.J. Mack stretches the range. It spins out. Offensive rebound and a putback for Zachary Davis. He's got all four for the Gamecocks. That's one way. You know, if you can win the glass game, if you're South Carolina, you can win the glass game. Get yourself a couple extra possessions on the offensive rebound. Ole Miss, not the greatest defensive rebounding team in the, in the conference. Early on, Murray has been guarded very tightly by Talon Cooper. Here's Murray out front, a little bit of space. Cooper picks him up on the perimeter. Finds Brakefield on the opposite side. Brakefield to the elbow, dumps it off to Flanagan. Shot clock at one, forces it up, grazes the rim, and South Carolina clears it. South Carolina can get something early in transition. They'll try to do that. If not, they're going to take their time, like to post up B.J. Mack. We've seen this South Carolina team a few times, and one of the things that Lamont Paris has continued to talk about with us is the quality of the shots that they get, and that comes with patience on the offensive end. Oh, and, and he brought in some good decision makers, too. He brought in guys that are going to be patient, make the extra pass, and you add up all those things, and you're going to get a good shot every time down the floor, which is part of my road recipe, by the way. To winning on the road, you've got to be patient, get high quality shots. Cisse, Bob puts the shot up, can't get it to go, but he's headed to the free throw line. And we've got subs coming into the game. There's Lamont Paris, second year in South Carolina. Incredible turnaround. You see overall 32 and 26. That's after losing 21 games a year ago in his first season. He's put together a really good squad this year. Yeah, he's in the offseason. They identified where their weaknesses were and said, we're going to bring in guys that are more mature veterans.
veteran kind of guys. Josh Gray and Jacoby Wright come into the game for South Carolina. Morrell comes back in as Juju Murray will go to the bench for the first time. Second free throw for Cisse. Missed them both, but an offensive rebound for Jamin Brakefield. He's picked up by Gray on the perimeter. Brakefield drives, dumps it off down low. That's a tough pass to Cisse. Now South Carolina in transition. And Davis fouled all the way to the rim. Very aggressive Zachary Davis to start this game, getting out in transition. No hesitation, I love that. Goes off two feet, strong, right to the rim. That foul on Matthew Morrell is his second, and that's with 16.06 to play in the first half. Chris Beard did not like that call from Josue Nieves. Nieves joined by Steven Anderson and Lee Cassell as the officials today. Davis has five of South Carolina's seven points as Morrell goes to the bench. Yeah, South Carolina's been able to slow him down early on in this game. It's an 8-0 run for South Carolina after falling behind 4 to nothing. They've scored eight straight. And the Gamecocks have a four-point lead. South Carolina... This was their week with an open date. Murray with the floater. It's tipped out. That's a foul on Cisse, and that is not a spot where you want to pick one up for the big man. 15-51 to play in the first half. Games, There's no doubt. And that would mean 11 conference wins, but only 19 overall. Right. And then you look at the quality of wins, though, and that's, that's going to be the most important thing. You see Ole Miss... Switching some things up here with a little full court pressure. Get the 10 second call. That is a turnover by South Carolina. Ole Miss gives a different look defensively. PJ Caldwell into the game for the first time for the Rebels coming out of the timeout. And that's a situation where South Carolina, you could attack that, right? They just, they were a little hesitant. Uh, when you see that press, you've got to attack it. Should have been two points on the other end if they could have. Steven Clark has come in for South Carolina. Grad transfer from the Citadel. There's Brandon Murray from the elbow. And you see a lot of that high ball screens with Ole Miss wanting to get the bigs of South Carolina in the pick and roll. Wow. Contact and then a foul on Josh Gray the other way. <laughs> Flanagan, athletic, six foot six, not afraid. Challenging big Josh Gray at the rim. That's a seven footer right there. Does that look like a freight train coming downhill? <laughs> wow, what an effort. Talk about getting to the NCAA tournament back into it. Though. That's the kind of effort that you want to see for a team fighting to get back in it. Early on, that high pick and roll there in the middle of the floor worked for Ole Miss. Got Cisse a couple of dunks. TJ Caldwell on the drive, and TJ Caldwell draws the foul. That goes against Zachary Davis. It's his first. Free throws coming up for TJ Caldwell. One thing we need to mention for South Carolina, Gamecocks are without Miles Studi today. He did not make the trip. Sprained his left knee in practice on Thursday. In the first meeting between Ole Miss and South Carolina, he was a big part of the Gamecock success. Hit four of five from behind the arc for 12 points in that game. Yeah, at 39% right now, one of the better three-point shooters in the SEC. But Ole, uh, uh, South Carolina, their style of play lends to playing well on the road. They typically take care of the basketball. From a defensive standpoint, they don't gamble. Right? They don't gamble, get out of position for a lot of steals and those types of things. So... You see Ole Miss really have to work their offense to get a good look. Pressure again from the Rebels. South Carolina gets it ahead to Michi Johnson. Here's Jacoby right into the lane. Kicks it out. Extra pass. Three on the way from Johnson. It's good. Just off a straight on three, and Michi Johnson knocks out the triple. Yeah, and that was that extra pass. You called it. They're always looking. Of course, Michi Johnson, their best shooter, so they're going to make sure they know where he is at all times. 
really trying to deny the ball to Juju Murray. Here's Allen Flanagan, guarded by Johnson. A tough contested shot by Flanagan. Cissé nearly had another offensive rebound. Couldn't squeeze it. Ole Miss started two of three from the field. They've missed their last six shots. And that has been South Carolina's defense. They do a good job of just staying in front of the basketball so that now you don't need help. Because if you can command that double team, now the defense gets in rotations, and that's when, as an offense, you can get some good looks. But South Carolina has done a good job of staying down in their stance, not getting beat off the dribble, which Ole Miss is... That's what they're going to try to do. They're going to try to turn the corner, get to the rim. Hey, by the way, a second ago, I had the wrong seven-footer for Ole Miss. I said Cissé, it was Jamarian Sharp. Oh, there you go. They get a couple of them. I mean, he's five inches taller than <laughs> Cissé. I should be able to recognize that. Josh Gray. At the free throw line, you get a look there at Jamarian Sharp. And now Josh Gray. A couple of weeks ago... And it hasn't been a super productive year for Josh Gray in terms of numbers. Do you know what he's capable of? He went out, knocked down 15 against Georgia a couple of weeks ago. And that's big there because Colin Murray Boyles was just called for his second foul. So the two guys that we talked about right out of the gate, Matt Morrell, Colin Murray Boyles, both, both with trouble. two fouls <laughs> with just under 14 to play in the first half. Well, and the one thing that South Carolina doesn't have a lot of is that interior size. You know, Josh Gray comes in as a seven-footer and block shots, defensive rebound. Outside of him, Colin Murray Boyles also a shot blocker. Not much more athleticism or size, but really good. You know, you look at Talon Cooper at six foot four, uh, point guard, so he brings some size from that position. Since the first two buckets from Cissé, has Ole Miss had an open look in this game? They really have. They really have. And, you know, again, going back to that South Carolina defense, that is a real, just a shell. You have to have hard cuts, hard screens. We've seen that Ole Miss. We've seen Ole Miss have a, a couple of decent looks at it, miss them. Some layups, but outside of that, it's been contested twos that they've been forced to shoot. Colin Murray Boyle staying in the game for South Carolina, playing with two fouls. One of the five starters in the game right now for South Carolina. You've also got Jacoby Wright on the floor. Well contested, 19 footer won't go. Well, this has missed seven straight shots. Colin Murray boils, just muscles his way inside and gets it off the glass. The Gamecocks now lead it by seven. Well, what you look from that move is he got good position early, and then he caught it, didn't waste any time. Spin move, use that strength and explosiveness right to the rim. Murray guarded by Cooper, contested again. Every shot Ole Miss is taking is with a hand in their face. Rebels have drawn almost six and a half minutes without a made field goal. This may be their best offense getting out in transition. Caldwell has it knocked away by Murray Boyles. Yeah, that was a great situation right oh. there for Caldwell. He, did they call the foul? They called a foul on it there. It looked like you see, Murray Boyles, yeah, he, he reached in. He tried to pull, he tried to pull back his hands and say no, but he caught him, and that was that's a that's a situation there with a freshman. He's going to learn. That is not how you want to get your third foul. Coaches have different philosophies about leaving guys on the floor with two fouls. Sometimes it's about trust. This one tipped out by Sharp. Brandon Murray, three on the way, missed everything. All it hit was the backboard. Well, that, that's four offensive rebounds. It's something I think Ole Miss may be able to take advantage of is get in the offensive glass. Try to get you extra possessions. Another block there for Ole Miss. Ahead to Flanagan, lays it off the glass and in. Ole Miss, one of the better fast break teams in the SEC, averaging just over 12 fast break points per game. And they asked Chris Beard about that, and he said they got to miss some shots. 
Right, exactly. They do. And listen, they play with a slower pace. Okay, and it's not that they take the air out of the ball or anything. They, they just are under control, patient. H.G. E. Johnson tried the three over Sharp. And Ole Miss trying to get something in transition. And Jacoby Wright called for a foul. And a little too handsy there. And picks up his first. A five-point lead for South Carolina in a low-scoring game here in Oxford at the SJB Pavilion. Murray Boyles and then some contact on Matthew Morrell taking a three with the clock winding down inside five seconds that some people that wear red and blue thought should have <laughs> resulted in free throws. As Jacoby Wright again called for another one. Yeah, and that's obviously unnecessary foul there. And talking with Coach Beard, he wants his team to stay dedicated to attacking the paint, attack the rim. South Carolina doesn't have a lot of rim protection. Josh Gray, the seven-footer, and CMB call it Murray Boyles are really the only shot blockers they have. So the other side of that, too, if you stay dedicated to attacking the paint, you're going to get on, uh, South Carolina in foul trouble. Get to the free throw line. That's high percentage shots, right? We talk yep. about high percentage shots, free throws, layups, and open jumpers. It's a lot of positives if you can get to that rim for Ole Miss. Ole Miss fifth in the SEC in free throw shooting, 74.8%, and they are in the bonus now with 11 minutes to go in the first half. In this game, Ole Miss has three made field goals and four made free throws for their 10 points. Well, it's not going to be easy. Nothing's easy against a South Carolina's defense. You just got to stay dedicated to what it is you're trying to do, and that's attack. Kobe Wright, three on the way. Won't go. Flanagan with the rebound. He tries to push it. Lobs it ahead, and Cissé went way up. Pass, pass led him just a little too much. He did. Big big fella was pumping his knees. Looked like Usain Bolt running up the floor there. Great. You like that advanced pass, though, by Alan Flanagan. you got to make that pass. Strip. Don't know if you give that a steal or a block for T.J. Caldwell, but he took it away from... Jacoby right down low. Great field working against Davis. Drives in, turns around, left hand, and more free throws coming up. Well, that's that's the move. You have Alan Flanagan was looking to attack there, didn't have it. Break field, caught it right at the elbow. Really good position, put his head down and just attacked. Ooh, great defense. Fouls piling up for South Carolina in this first half. Three on Murray Boyles. He's on the bench. Zachary Davis has two. Jacoby Wright has two. And Jamin Brakefield misses the first of two free throws here. So you see Ole Miss staying dedicated to their press, their pressure, which I thought that previous possession Kobe Wright when it jumped up and came down with it, but there was no call. David Brakefield has entered the 1,000 point club. Very exclusive club. Kobe Wright off the skip pass gets it out to Mack. Now out front to Taquan Cooper. Cooper went right by Nunez, then he turns into Gumby. Just kind of contorted his body to get away from Cissé and get the bucket. I mean, not a lot of players are going to be able to finish that. Flanagan from the free throw line gets it to fall. And that's where Al was money in their first meeting, getting right to that SEC logo area. And he's so athletic and strong, he can rise up against any defender. Did we just see shots go in on, on <laughs> both floors? <laughs> Consecutive you possessions? Think things are going to loosen up a little bit, Rich. You know that. DJ Mack. Hands it off to right, curling off the screen. Some contact, does not get a whistle. He does get the bucket. Lamont Paris absolutely thought that was a foul. Flanagan on the drive. He thought probably should have been a foul there. And a timeout taken by South Carolina. Talon Cooper called that timeout. Once South Carolina secured it to avoid losing the possession. Coach Baird had talked about that yesterday, how South Carolina is going to defend or try to defend without fouls. You saw a perfect example right there. South Marcus had a game where 
He's just gone off. They've had multiple guys have big games. It's just been the consistency that and they've been lacking. Arkansas now with back-to-back -back SEC wins for the first time this season. That one on the road in the midweek against Texas A&M. Went at home today against Mizzou. E.J. Mack. You see the South Carolina offense. they got five guys outside. Nobody in the paint clogging it up. Juju Murray with a steal. Pick that pass off. Flanagan attacks and finishes with the left hand. Just shy of the rim to make it a two-point game. Every time he touches it, he better be looking to attack that paint. Because there's nobody that's going to stop him to get to that rim. It's just about, about him finishing. E.G. Johnson on the drive. He overshot the rim. Again, Flanagan pushing it. This time lays it off for Murray. Looking for a three. Does not get the roll. And South Carolina digs it out. You got three guys for Ole Miss hitting that offensive glass. Got a finger on it, just didn't, weren't able to pull it in. That's A.J. Mack, open three, dead center. In their offense, in South Carolina's offense, they move the ball so well, but five guys are also moving. B.J. Mack is going to be the key because he's going to find himself open at that three-point line. Great field, lost the handle, got it back, and got it up off the glass for a bucket. Three points now for Jamin Brakefield. From the corner, how about a three for Talon Cooper? He shoots 44% from behind the arc. Pretty selective when he takes them. That's his 41st made three of the year. Cisse off the wraparound pass. What a feed by Murray. Excellent middle ball screen again. Juju Murray keeps his dribble alive. He knows they're going to try to take away. Me scoring to the rim will fall back on Cisse. Made the correct decision. Morris Ugasuk is in the game for South Carolina. Here's Cooper on the drive. And whistle. Foul on Ole Miss. That's Jamin Brakefield. Drawing the whistle. Gabe Cox have been in front most of the way. Lead it by four. I bought three of the same jacket to get the fourth free. I subscribed to get a deal on these memory supplements. Then for now. Mark Sears comes back. And my goodness, he has taken on a role. Not only does he score, but he facilitates. Playing the best defense of his career. Pretty entertaining game at Rupp this afternoon with Alabama in Lexington to take on Kentucky Wildcats. Michi Johnson gives it away. Tested three won't go. It's tipped around, and Ole Miss will get it. Flanagan gives it off to Brakefield. That was good. That He caught it, and he knew he was going to try to attack that gap right there. Another high middle ball screen. Ole Miss has not made a shot outside the paint in this game. You had the one kind of mid-range jumper from Flanagan. This blocked out of bounds by Gray. Great block. And... Consider Matthew Morrell, right, with foul trouble. He takes about 31% of their three-point shots. Good job by there. Josh Gray, seven foot, has to get out on the perimeter to defend. But Brandon Murray, he got the message from Coach Beard. We're going to attack, fellas, all night long. Murray gets it into Brakefield. He'll let it fly from three. Won't go. Murray <laughs> nearly had the rebound. Fighting there for it, but couldn't hold on. My well, man climbed the ladder on Josh Gray up there. But, yeah, so... Ole Miss, really good three-point shooting team, number two in the SEC at 38%. Don't take a whole bunch of them. Uh, but Matt Morrell is their primary three-point shooter. With him with the foul trouble, not going to get as many up. Beachy Johnson fouled on the shot. That's the seventh foul on Ole Miss, so South Carolina now in the bonus. But this is a two-shot situation regardless. It's been fun to watch Michi Johnson really transform his game. He's always been a really good spot-up shooter, and we've seen him this year take on a bigger role, not only putting it on the floor and finishing, but also just from you know, point guard and the decision that facilitating mode, he's able to do that too. So Ten points per game in SEC play. For the year, he's 18th in the entire conference in points per game, averaging just under 14. 
Richard Johnson, a couple of years at Ohio State before transferring to South Carolina last season. Six point lead for the Gamecocks, one off their biggest in the game. Flanagan left it short. Stephen Clark pulls down the rebound. Five minutes left in the opening half. South Carolina leading by six. Davis working on Flanagan. Spins. Tries to dump it off to Gray. Tipped around. Ends up back in the hands of Gray. And he goes up for the reverse lay-in. Incredible interior pass in there. Zachary Davis has... He averages about four points a game. He's already got six, and he's been extremely active on both ends. Murray on the downhill drive. Trying to float it over Gray. Touch last by Brakefield. South Carolina's got it headed the other way. Right there. Good tip pass. Another good pass by Clark. Good finish by Josh Gray. Bucket here. South Carolina makes it a double-digit lead. Up 27-19, closing in on four minutes to go in the first half. Gamecocks coming off back-to-back -back losses for the first time this season. They've had a week to get ready for this game. Wright has it stripped out of bounds with six on the shot clock. Good hands by Flanagan. It makes it so difficult, though, is because the paint is open. So now you just got to beat your guy one-on-one. -on -one. Get by your guy. Even Josh Gray at seven feet, he's outside near the three-point line, but he's setting screens. That's what makes South, one of the things that makes South Carolina's offense so tough to defend. Johnson on the drive, tipped around, and a foul with point one left on the shot clock. I'm gonna have to look at that one. Gonna take us to an official's timeout, and the officials are headed to the monitor with South Carolina leading it by eight. To Matt Morrell, you know, he's their most explosive scorer, so don't forget he's been on the bench. I guess at the 16 minute mark, he came out, so second half is gonna look a lot different for Ole Miss when he comes back in the game. And foul was on T.J. Caldwell. Zachary Davis makes one of two at the line. The lead for the Gamecocks is nine. Ole Miss has had multiple three-minute scoring drafts, uh, droughts in the first half. They've hit just seven of 26 shots and are 0 of 3 from behind the arc. Brakefield trying to get to a soft spot in the middle of the lane, and then he shot it too strong, and Gray pulls down the rebound. That's a look you want right there in the paint. Four or five footer. So you're supposed to make that though. That's, right? that's that's the idea. That's the idea. Zachary Davis having a heck of a game. He's typically he's a great cutter, right? So you'll see him a lot of times on the weak side, cut to the basket, and they're good at finding him. But today he's been doing it with the ball in his hands. Today was the 12th straight start for Zachary Davis after coming off the bench for the first half of the season. His season high is 12 points. Caldwell off the back iron. Another one and done trip for Ole Miss as Jacoby Wright gets the rebound on the offside. And early in the half, we saw Ole Miss hitting that offensive glass. And because of the style that South Carolina plays, you're not going to get as many possessions in the game as you normally would. So you've got to try to create possessions. Ole Miss able to come up with the steal and get out and run here for that defense sets. Caldwell got the steal, but it was really created by Brandon Murray. That's a tough pass into the lane. Jump ball, possession arrow to South Carolina. But the body still on the floor, too. Yeah, Jalen Murray trying to make something happen there. Understanding if we can get in the paint, good things are going to happen. Davis limping off the floor. Talon Cooper and BJ Mack back in the game for South Carolina. And with Miles Studi out, that Davis injury, hopefully he can get back in. They're already down one man. 
Flanagan and Cissé just came back in for Ole Miss. Matthew Morrell getting set to check in with two fouls with about two minutes left in the half. It's an 11-point lead for the Gamecocks, their biggest. Talon Cooper working against Nunez, has it blocked by Cissé out of bounds. Only 2.9 left on the shot clock. Great help by Cissé coming over, and Nunez doing a good job of just staying in front. You see, he doesn't reach in, keeps his hands high, knows he's got a shot blocker behind him. Ole Miss gets a steal as Morrell comes back into the game. Juju Murray pulls up for three in transition to Strong. Ole Miss now 0 of 4 from behind the arc. Stephen Clark trying to post down low against Murray, but they couldn't get it to him. Minute and a half to play. That switch that they wanted. Shot clock won't go, but a long rebound for South Carolina. Michi Johnson into the corner, open three. Jacoby right buries it for the Gamecocks. How often have we seen a three off of an offensive rebound? That time, South Carolina did a good job as Ole Miss defense is scrambling to get back to the guy. Moves the ball quick for an open J. A 10 0 run for South Carolina. Over the last four minutes and ten seconds. Damon Brakefield looking inside to Cissé, who was just backing down Michi Johnson. And Johnson was called for the foul. You had to find a way. That's good ball movement right there to Lon Cooper. Recognizes the open three-point shooter in the corner. And, yeah, you've got to find a way to get it to Cissé in there. That big fellow right there had... Michi Johnson on his hip. Musa Cisse, six points in the game. He's also got three blocks. In SEC play, it has been a struggle for him at the free throw line. He looks good on that one, shooting just 36% oh, of the line. Huh? Does it work that way? Yes! Very good. I was worried there for a second. And a lane violation. Somebody stepped into the paint early. On a free throw that went in. Well, they, yeah, they probably playing the percentages, try, trying to get a little bit of advantage if that thing did come off the rim. Cooper guarded tightly by Brakefield. Three on the way, and that three is good for Morris Ugasuk. And a timeout taken by Ole Miss in South Carolina. This is very efficient. Uh, you know, they've got guys that can go one on one, Michi Johnson, BJ Mack, but they also got guys that can hit that three to stretch that defense out. Ole Miss. Rallied from a big deficit in Columbia. That ball was touched last by South Carolina. Just trying to lob it down low, but two Garnet jerseys there yeah. bracketing Musa Cisse. Well, you had Matthew Morrell coming off a of Musa Cisse screen. And so Cisse can set a ball, a ball screen and roll, or you can set a screen on Morrell's man on the, on the offside and roll to the basket. Two different actions there, hoping for the same result. Flanagan with shot clock winding down, makes the jumper. He's going to get that shot all night, right? We know he can do that. Cuts it to 14 to Lon Cooper on the drive, off the glass. And South Carolina will take it. As they get ready to start the second half in a game that is critical to their postseason hopes. There's no doubt. They're going to come back this half. I think with, uh, I'm sure Coach Beard lit a fire underneath them. And that man right there is a... Got a lot of work to do after having foul trouble in the first half. Matthew Morrell played only four minutes in the first half. They get it to Musa Cisse for the dunk. Cisse's got seven in the game. Great action. They started the game out the exact same way, running that high middle pick and roll with the alley oop to Musa Cisse. Beg your pardon, he's now got nine points in the game. 
Establishing the basket on its opening possession. B.J. Mack looking to answer off the mark. The follow is there for Zachary Davis. He's now in double figures, one off his season high. He has been a big difference in this game. We've seen him make a jump shot. He's attacked the offensive glass, and he started up in the first half posted up. Morrell shoots an air ball. It's grabbed by Brakefield. You see the update from Joe Lenardi. He's now got Texas A&M as one of the first four out. Ole Miss moves down one spot to fourth of the first four out. Flanagan, crossover, finds some space, knocks down the 17-footer, and he's fouled on the shot. That's a shot he can get anytime he wants. Explosive, we talked about his 6'6 frame, athleticism, great step, step back right there. The key to that, once you step back, you've got to get back on balance. You saw two feet on balance, bends his knees nice. Flanagan sold that little bump at the end <laughs> yeah. as well. Got Might a hand well. on the stomach, and then he ended up, ended up in the bench. <laughs> Knows, so Flanagan at the free throw bad. line. He knows how to get a few calls here and there. That's a tough one for Zachary Davis. Almost fans tried to come to life for the first time today. Their team trailing by 11. B.J. Mack working against Brakefield. Mack trying to muscle it up, and he does with three white jerseys around him. Uh, that was some incredible patience to wait for that moment where just able to sneak it up there. Cissé was there ready to block it. Couldn't get a fingertip on it. B.J. Mack likes to do that, man. He's little Charles Barkley right there. Playing and working off the screen. South Carolina defended it well. Shot clock under 10. Morrell working against Johnson. Shot clock under 5. Tough fadeaway and Morrell knocks it out. Well, Ole Miss has two guys who can make tough shots. Off the dribble and Al Flanagan and Matthew Morrell. Cooper gets all the way to the rim. Goes down, no whistle from the corner. Davis off the mark with the three and Murray gets the offside rebound. Nice job by Talon Cooper to get back and stop that basketball. Flanagan going to try a three. Johnson with the rebound. Good job by Brakefield not to lose B.J. Mack in that action. Cooper. Find some space just inside the free throw line, and he gets a friendly roll. He's a tough guard. Tough cover at six foot four. Patient. Just got his shoulder into Jalen Murray. Step back, ten footer. Got a whistle and a foul underneath. A long way from the ball. Zachary Davis not pleased with it. The initial call was a foul on Ole Miss on. Alan Flanagan, an offensive foul well away from the ball, and they're going to go to the monitor and take a look at it to make sure it doesn't need to be upgraded. Yeah, I'm sure was fighting for position. We get a look at it. Taking a look to see if there's a flagrant underneath. Then we can take another look at that. I a flagrant too. So now Zachary Davis at the free throw line for South Carolina. Yet for Alan Flanagan, we just talked about how valuable he was, his ability to score in one on one situations. Flanagan had 11 points in the game. He and Musa Cisse have combined to go 9 of 16 today. The rest of the team is 2 yeah. of 19. Well, if that with Matt Morell obviously on the bench for the majority of the first half, now Morell is going to have to, he, he understands the assignment. He's going to have to shoulder a lot of that offensive. Presence. Officials perhaps a little more aware of that right now after what we saw in the Alabama Florida game earlier this week. The call was not made during the game but led to a suspension this week. Talamori Boyles has it blocked by Cisse. That's his fourth block of the game. That was a scout report block right there. Understood when. Colin Murray Boyles was going to spin that In, left hand. Inside the Cissé, he's fouled by B.J. Mack. Good job 
by Cisse as Murray Boyle spins. He's right there. Goes straight up. So Jamarian Sharp leading the SEC at 2.4 blocks per game. Cisse well above his season average of one and a half. He's got four today. Ole Miss, big part of what they do on the defensive end. It's an Ole Miss team that has had its struggles defensively this year. They've been a great shot blocking team. Yeah, there's no question. And they've got the two seven footers. There's a seven foot five sharp. And that takes a lot of pressure off your guards, man, when you know you get a couple of shot blockers back there. You can put a lot of pressure in the perimeter. Morell just picks up his third, and that's. Not what Chris Beard and Ole Miss won. And those SEC struggles at the free throw line for Musa Cisse continue. Yet Ole Miss, you know, the importance of Matt Morrell takes about 30% of their three point shots. Been on fire recently, last six games. Only two shot attempts today, none from three. Davis travels with it, shuffled his feet before he put the ball on the floor. And that takes us to an official's timeout. 15.57 left, South Carolina in front by 14. Watch me. I don't know how that works, but that's a pretty good day at the office. Is it a check? Yes, it is. College student with a little, uh, little extra <laughs> jingle now. South Carolina leading it by 14. Matthew Morrell, three, and he is fouled on the shot. That foul is on Michi Johnson. Lamont Paris didn't like it. I tried well, to decide if he's upset with his guy or the call. Well, the, the, he's so mad because he understands the last thing you want is for Matthew Morrell to start seeing that ball go through the, through the rim and get some kind of rhythm. See him averaging nearly 18 a game in SEC play, and the percentage, shooting percentage numbers are good. Over the last six games for Matthew Morrell, he's hit made 21 of 48 threes. That's 44%. And he's shooting 49% from the field. This is the second. Couple of subs coming in for South Carolina. Jacoby Wright. And Josh Gray back into the game. And up to this point, South Carolina's done a great job taking care of the basketball. They're sitting on four turnovers right now. Ole Miss has thrown that full court press on them. That's a that's another reason for their success. Their assist to turnover ratio was number two in the SEC. Morell makes two of three at the line. Lamont Paris was right in front of us. As Michi Johnson came off to him, he said, you have no say. That shot either goes <laughs> in or it doesn't go in. But don't foul it. No. I mean, you just contest. Put your hand up, and he's right. It's That's all you can do. You're not going to block the shot. I mean, the only one you see blocking jump shots is Musa Cisse. Davis was trying to feed it to Josh Gray off of the pick and then the roll to the basket. Gray had to throw it off of Murray's leg to keep the possession alive. Ron Cooper. Oh, contested baseline jumper with the shot clock winding down. Ron Cooper at his third school, Minnesota last year, after three seasons at Moorhead State. What you appreciate about him is he's a facilitator first, but then, as all great point guards do, at the end of the shot clock, ball in their hands, they also have to be able to score, and he can do that. Nunez and Juju Murray go to the bench for Ole Miss. Brandon Murray and TJ Caldwell come into the game. Good job breaking that press. And Ole Miss is hoping to speed up South Carolina a little bit too. Forced a tempo. Ole Miss averages about 69 possessions a game. South Carolina is at 62, so it gives you an idea of the difference. 69 is about the average in college basketball. 
Williams had stripped away. It was touched last by South Carolina. But that's it, getting extra possessions, whether it's playing on the ball, deflections, steals, offensive rebounds on the other end. Ole Miss started out, first nine minutes of the game, had four offensive rebounds, but only finished the half with one more offensive rebound. Right field being gallant, uh, guarded by Murray Boyles. He gets to the rim, and he's fouled all the way. Good attack. Got to stay committed to attacking the paint against South Carolina right now. You know, force the issue. Three-point shots not falling. Attack the rim. Ole Miss 0 of 6 from behind the arc in the game. That foul went on Josh Gray. It's his second. Conference play 13 per game for Jamin Brakefield. He's got four today. Brakefield had just four points in the first meeting against South Carolina. That was back on the 6th of February. <laughs> Jacoby Wright, three is good from the wing, just in front of the South Carolina bench. Now, that was a quick shot. Not typical for South Carolina's offense, but Talon Cooper did a good job. He gets some overhelp by Ole Miss in that corner, and you find a wide open three. Second time today that South Carolina has led by 16. Breakfield working against Cooper, rims out, tipped up and in by Cisse. Good work. Good work on the offensive glass. Eleven points today for Musa Cisse. That's one off a season high. Ugasa. Shoots an air ball. It's grabbed underneath by Colin Moore, Murray Boyles, and he's fouled. Brandon Murray picks up the foul. He missed a good portion of the first half and some foul trouble, too. And Ole Miss has done a good job of making life difficult for him, not allowing him to catch it where he likes to, forcing him outside of the paint. Right there, that was just sheer strength and athleticism over Brendan Murray for that rebound. Murray Boyle's just four points today. He's averaging 19 over his last five ball games, including a 31-point game against Vanderbilt. Ole Miss turns it over in transition. Good steal there by Jacoby Wright. Yeah, that was... Excellent vision. Stepped right in that passing lane. Knew exactly where Ole Miss was going with that. Tipped around and Murray Boyles ends up with it, and he goes straight to the rack. Good things happen when you stay around the rim. Look what I found, Murray Boyles. Probably the easiest two he's going to get all afternoon. Brakefield has a tip, nearly a steal there for Murray Boyles. Gets into the lane, tries to dump it off. He does Cisse. He's got 13 points, a new season high. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's one thing Murray Boyles is going to learn. He reaches, puts himself out of position now, which allows the penetration in the lane, and defense breaks down. Tipped away by Ole Miss. South Carolina keeps it. They'll inbound in front of their bench. As B.J. Mack comes back in for the Gamecocks. And Juju Murray is back in for Ole Miss. Rebels 0 of 6 from 3. It was the first time this season where they didn't have at least two made threes in the first half of a game. Yeah, they've got multiple guys that can make them. Juju Murray, Brakefield, obviously Matthew Morrell. 38%. They don't make a ton of them. But they shoot it really well from three. And you don't you feel like at some point that they're gonna get a they're gonna make a couple and that's gonna open up their offense. Nietzsche Johnson, shot clock winding down. He's guarded tightly by Cisse, and Brakefield gets the rebound. Great defense. Brandon Murray coming over the health to close down that. Driving lane. 
pass was off the mark a little bit, so no catch and shoot from the corner opportunity for Morrell. Brakefield going to try a three, and Ole Miss finally gets a three to go. He can make that shot. You saw him get in rhythm a little right with his right hand to sidestep. It's an 11-point lead for South Carolina, and an offensive foul on Talon Cooper as Brakefield held his ground. Ole Miss trying to generate a little momentum in the second half. Wendy's breakfast two for three is so good, the crew is giving every combination code names. These shots, right? Yes, they got to make shots. But how can they create extra possessions? Defensively, they've, they've been good, giving up two offensive rebounds doesn't help. There's a strip and then a foul. So Michi Johnson strips Matthew Morrell, comes up with the steal, and then the foul on Matthew Morrell is his fourth. Well, if you expose the ball, they're going to get it. And they don't typically, they're not a high steal team, South Carolina's defense, because they do, they they play it honest, straight up. But if you just leave it out there, they're willing to take it. They, they're going to take it. If you're going to try and give it to them, they're going to take it. So Matthew Morrell goes to the bench. Ole Miss has hit five of seven shots since the Allen Flanagan ejection. Here's B.J. Mack. Working against Musa Cisse. Gets the handoff to Michi Johnson. Looking to roll. They throw it inside. Mack ends up with the ball in his hand. They've had it partially blocked by Cisse. If they give him a block on that, that's five in the game. Then a lob, but a little too much. Cisse trying to grab the loose ball. Who touched it last? It'll stay on the offensive end for Ole Miss. That was incredible effort by Cisse. Guards the ball screen. I didn't think you could throw it too high. For him that's a second alley-oop to him that's gone through his hands he catches this on the high inbound muscles his way up it was blocked by the rim got it back and then turns it over michi johnson trying to lay it in overshot it but there to clean it up is jacoby wright with a big swing there it really was and if you're old miss i mean you've got two point blank shots right at the rim that's just unfortunate at times. Juju Murray gets it off to Brakefield, headed toward the rim, and he draws a foul. Foul on B.J. Mack. See it right here. Just They just collapsed on Musa Cisse. And good job of Michi Johnson reading that, getting in that passing lane. Two fouls now on B.J. Mack, and Jamin Brakefield back to the free throw line. Ole Miss 10 of 17 as a team today from the line. Yeah, and they're a 75% shooting team, top five in the league. So when your jump shot is not falling, as they want to from the three-point line, you cannot also struggle from the free throw line. And rare to see Jamin Brakefield struggle. An 83% free throw shooter makes one of two. He's three of six from the line today. Brandon Murray now, good ball pressure. Brakefield comes over for the for the help, but you give him any space. I'm telling you, he's the key to their offense because he can make that three, and when he is, it opens up the paint for their drives. Second three-pointer made for B.J. Mack today. He's got 39 now on the season. Brakefield with the lob, sharp, never caught it cleanly. Goes out to Caldwell. His three is an air ball. That's the easiest rebound that Zachary Davis will get all year. No doubt. We've seen it now the third time an alley -oop wasn't able to be converted by Ole Miss. Just couldn't put your hands on it. Ole Miss had cut it to 11. South Carolina has pushed the lead back out to 15 as we close in on nine minutes to play. Cooper, physical. Kicks it out, same shot. This time, Mack has it spin out, and a foul on Sharp. It's a good offensive rebound for Zachary Davis. Yeah, it was. He's six seven, athletic. That's another way he could impact the game. And he's had a really good game. He's impacted it from every which way you can imagine. He's got on the glass. He's made shots. 
a guy only averaging four points a game. He had to step up, no Miles Studi. So who else is going to step up and give you just a couple more buckets? Matthew Morrell back into the game. He has been plagued by foul trouble today. He's played only 12 minutes. That's for the guy that leads the SEC at almost 35 minutes per game. Brandon Murray is fighting DJ back on that block. Murray Boyles kicks it out. Shot clock under five. Michi Johnson on the drive, lost the handle. They say he touched it last, and it's Ole Miss ball going the other way. And Brandon Murray did an excellent job there, just going straight up. Matt Morrell fighting in the paint. Lamont Paris wants to know where the whistle was. He saw the contact. He did not hear the whistle. Yeah, we, we see it a lot now from a defensive standpoint. These guys practice every day. Just go straight up, verticality. And you know the referee's doing a good job of letting them play through that. Brandon Murray knocks out a three. Murray from Germantown, Maryland. Former Maryland Mr. Basketball. Started his career. LSU and then to Georgetown. He's on the all-freshman team in 2022. B.J. Mack and one. Strong move for number two in Garnet. And that's his move. Patient. That spin move right there. I mean, he'll he'll spin two, three times in possession. Right, left. B.J. Mack really is deceptive. If you look at him and you look at his body type, you don't think, okay, this is a guy that can really hurt you from three. And it's going to have yeah. that kind of quickness with a spin move. But he has proved people wrong all season long. Good footwork. And he like he knows when he can feel you on his hip. Right? He's as good as anybody. Spin right off you for a shot. DJ Murray forced it up, almost looking for a foul as opposed to trying to make the shot. point of the game where Ole Miss cannot afford many empty possessions and then you got a foul on the Rebels on the other end of the floor that's Brandon Murray picks up his second South Carolina in control leading it by 14 also at 10 points against DePaul Colin Murray Boyles at the free throw line makes the first for South Carolina that last foul on Ole Miss was their seventh team foul so the Gamecocks will shoot free throws the rest of the way. Eight points now for Colin Murray Boyles. Matthew Morrell on the floor playing with four fouls for Ole Miss. You see now that zone with Zachary Davis up top, man. It's tough to see over that length and get a shot off over that length. Brandon Murray from the corner. Got the signal from the official where they will go back and take a look at that one. Good ball movement. Got it to the corner there. That's where you're going to have an opening for a three. Batted away by Caldwell. South Carolina runs it down to the backcourt with the shot clock under 10. Hooper puts his head down, trying to find some space. Gets a little bit, floats it up. And Murray runs it down for Ole Miss. Gets it to Caldwell. Good cut. Murray on the floater. And Gray pulls down the board. Ole Miss has gotten him in there. They just have not been able to convert those in the paint. The shot a moment ago from Brandon Murray was ruled a three. They will go back and look at that during the next break. Mm, that's tough. Murray Boyles is so strong. And he's given time to back you in. That's a tough, tough assignment for Matt Morrell. Six straight games now for Colin Murray Boyles with double figures. He's sitting on ten points today. Juju Murray draws the foul. Look at that camera angle. Toe on the line? Looks like it. Coach Lamont Paris explaining uh, 
It's like an extra color analyst. Right. You got a sidekick now. Jacoby right. He didn't like the fact that he didn't turn him back into the help. And Juju Murray's a hard driving right handed guy to the rim, and Jacoby Wright just allowed him that driving lane. I wasn't sure who he was talking to. I didn't realize that Michi Johnson was <laughs> down in front of the scores table in front of us. Well, he wanted to be talking to Jacoby Wright, but he was talking to anybody who would be listening. Fortunately, we were listening. Coach, we're listening to you. So Juju Murray goes one of two from the free throw line, and free throw shooting has been an issue today for an Ole Miss team. It shoots 78%. Murray comes up with a steal. And he lost the handle on the way up. That's a mm. turnover by Ole Miss off of the steal. They got what they wanted, a great read by Jalen Murray. So we've got a timeout on the floor. We'll take that shot from Brandon Murray that was ruled a three. It is turned back to a two. Three. We were right. I'll give you credit on that one. <laughs> And the other thing, too, South Carolina, again, they take care of the basketball. They don't give it away. Nine turnovers right now. Ole Miss has tried hard traps. They've pressed. Inside to Mack. Good seal and a good finish for B.J. Mack. Yeah, that was a great pass, too. Ole Miss down 17. Matthew Burrell fouled on a three for the second time today. That's Michi Johnson. J. Mack, good pass by Michi Johnson. The only place that he could have put it for Mack to catch and finish, he did. Good seal by B.J. Mack. And I think we've seen more fouls on the jump shot than any other game this year. I don't have the official statistics on that, but it seemed that way. Both teams. Matter of fact, the second time Matt Morell is going to the free throw line on a on a fouled three point shot. Both by Michi Johnson, right? Both by Michi Johnson, that's right. And he protested. I'm, I'm, I'm he sure protested. he appreciates. <laughs> he protested both times. Murray rattles the third one around and gets it to fall. Excuse me, Morrell does. Got it to 14. Ole Miss was trailing by 17, which was the biggest lead of the game for South Carolina. Only a second off of the shot clock, so they'll only get to the 20 seconds to get it past half court, which they've had a 10 second call this this game already. Not this oh time. My oh my goodness. Colin Murray boils, explodes up with the left hand. I mean, did you see how high that basketball bounced after he dunked it? Wow. Now that's how you break a press. Morell's three is short. Talon Cooper finds some space. It's a great ball thing. There's a few guys in our league, Ezra Munyon and certainly Talon Cooper, get in the lane. They know how to ball fake, get the big man up off his feet. Look at this. Ooh. He's explosive. Now, if you could drop a press break and have him be the guy that finishes every time, that's what you're going to want to draw. <laughs> him finishing at the rim. It'll be fun to watch him and his progression over the next couple of seasons. Although we hope that we see him. Just his talent. And, you know, he's doing everything now on just his instinct and his athleticism. And he's 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 a high IQ player. He's got great vision. He understands when to pass, when to shoot. But just all the other little things. We see him make some defensive mistakes, reaching in maybe when he shouldn't, and getting himself out of defensive position. But so athletic, he can recover. From Columbia, South Carolina. Played there through his junior year. In fact, he was the 4A player of the year in the state of South Carolina. Transferred though to Wasatch Academy in Utah for his senior season. Talked about maturity and playing high level competition. I'd say it worked out well. 
B.J. Mack trying to get another one. He got another one. So, so that's an example right there, right? Colin Murray Boyles is in the lane. He could have forced up, right? He could turn. We've seen him make that shot. What does he do? He turns that down, kicks it up to B.J. Mack at the three-point line. Three fifth in the basketball right now, 16 assists on 25 made buckets. Austin Nunez in the game for all this. Here's Brakefield guarded by Murray Boyles. Matthew Morrell, three on the way, and it won't go. Touch last, though, by South Carolina, so almost keeps it on the offensive end. Clearly, this South Carolina team is an NCAA tournament team, and so much of the tournament is about matchups. Sure. Can you see them as a second weekend team? Oh, there's no question. There's no question, because they do... They do the little things, right? We just talked about the assist to turnover ratio for South Carolina. So they're not going to beat themselves. They're a good rebounding team. They spread the floor. They're a veteran team. They defend. So, you know, they, they their game translates to different styles. If they have to play a little up-tempo, they can do that as well. But you mentioned the balance scoring, so if you're preparing for them, you know, it could be any guy's night. Ole Miss comes up with a steal. Breakfield leading the break. Three on two. He takes it right down the middle and lays it in. Damon Breakfield in double figures today for Ole Miss. What, what about on the flip side? It's an Ole Miss team that has been bubble in for the last month, month and a half. They are now bubble out and going the wrong direction at the end of the season with just four games remaining. Well, certainly, but we just talked about how impressive this South Carolina team is. I mean, this, this certainly no one thought that they were going to be in this position. I know Coach Lamont Paris did. So, you know, for Ole Miss, this is a game where you couldn't make any shots. I mean, not only from the three-point line, but they just had a rough night shooting the basketball from the free throw line, from the paint even. Almost 35% for the game, 18% from three. But Ole Miss, think about it, okay? You, you host Alabama, right? You take care of home. That's a great opportunity. You got Missouri, Georgia on the road, and then back with Texas A&M. So you've got multiple chances to show the committee that you belong in the NCAA tournament. And then we talked about the SEC tournament, right? You're going to have another opportunity to get some quality wins. So they're... They're fine. They're fine. But it's getting late. It is. It is. However, listen, the, I, I guess the point is the margin for error is becoming right. well, really, really small for Chris Beard. I mean, really, it, it always comes down to it's win. you got to win games. Like, you got to win to get in the NCAA tournament. I don't care who you are. If you're, <laughs> you know, if you're one of the teams that is, quote, unquote, a lock, you know, those teams... They've got to continue to win. So there's a lot to play for. And they know what's in front of them. Ole Miss's season low field goal percentage for a game is 36.8 today, shooting 35%. So, like, South Carolina, I don't know if they're still getting the respect that they deserve nationally. So, you know, this isn't a bad loss at all. Breakfield, mm. blocking foul underneath, goes to the, yeah. Well, his right hand was the first to make contact with the floor, but it was the left hand that he yeah. was holding. Mm. Rule of player leaves because of injury. The opposing team gets to choose from the remaining four players that were in the lineup at the time who shoots the free throws. And... Going from Breakfield at 83% to Musa Cisse is no an advantage. Idea. Yeah, that was good. And he missed both. Good coaching call by Coach Harris. Arkansas winning earlier today against Missouri, led by Caleb Battles, 42 points. Florida. Been playing really well in the second half of SEC play. Moved to 9-5 and five in the league with a win at home against Vanderbilt. I already told you just a few minutes ago, Kentucky up big at the half over Alabama at Rupp. And Auburn, Georgia coming up after us on the SEC Network. 
Texas A&M and Tennessee in Knoxville tonight on ESPN. And then we'll wrap up the day with Mississippi State and LSU on the SEC Network. And you love to see Ole Miss putting that full court pressure on. Still, that'll get you tested. That'll get you ready for the you tournament. You think? <laughs> Another great trap. Ball was knocked away and hit the end line. Touched, though, last by Ole Miss. So the Gamecocks, once again, will inbound, leading it by 14 with 96 seconds to play. Caught Jalen Murray reaching around. Remaining games for the Rebels this season. They've got Alabama coming up at home. No easy assignment there. Oh, but a great opportunity. And that's what that's yeah. what you that's what you ask for. It's what you need at it's this point as well. And then you go on the road at Missouri at Georgia. I'll actually be at that Missouri game. 7.30 Central tip Saturday night. Morrell short with a three. Kept alive by Murray, and then he's fouled. Got hit in the head. Jacoby Wright called for the foul, so Juju Murray will go to the free throw line. It certainly has been a physical game. Uh, both, both teams play physical. You can tell just with some of the foul trouble we've had, some of the guys just playing tough, playing physical. Both coaches coach that way. Combined 36 fouls in the game. 20 have been called on South Carolina, 16 on Ole Miss. It's always great for game flow. Exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> Or he gets them both, gets Ole Miss within 12. Well, I'm going to say Ole Miss is not going to have troubles shooting like they had today for the rest of the season. 35% from the field today. Ole Miss 18 of 51. South Carolina points and nine rebounds today for the Gamecocks. So you feel like if Ole Miss can get a turn over here, a quick shot. Three on the way. Michi couldn't get it to go, and it's a rebound for Cisse. Chance to get it single digits. A minute to play. Juju Murray. And the rebound goes to South Carolina. If Ole Miss makes that shot, they're not going to get it over the line. Ooh. Long pass ahead to B.J. Mack. And now Jacoby Wright, or excuse me, Davis, Zachary Davis with the exclamation mark. Career night for him. Played well. Made New an impact. career high for Zachary Davis with 14 points. Morrell going to try a long three. That's the kind of day it's been. Yeah, South Carolina's defense has made very few mistakes. And then you add in the combination of... Ole Miss just couldn't make shots, man. I mean, there are days like that. You're going to have days like that, unfortunately. Zachary Davis picks up his fourth foul, and Lamont Paris immediately went to the bench. 18 seconds remaining. Uga Suck is going to come in and replace him in just a moment with Nunez at the free throw line. Well, listen, we talked about how he's done everything in the stat sheet. Nine rebounds, four fouls, 14 points. He's done it all. It is a good day for Zachary Davis, who played 31 minutes, making his 10th consecutive start. Getting a little coaching as he comes to the bench to get into the game. <laughs> Ole Miss has made three threes today. That matches their season low. This is the worst shooting day of the season. Chris Beard's already at the half court stripe. It has been for a few seconds ready to shake Lamont Paris's hand. They're going to let the time run out. As South Carolina.